Enrique de Castro, meine Damen und Herren. Thank you. Herr Well, um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, um, this trade show is becoming probably the most relevant trade show in media globally. Uh, it's amazing to see how you guys have evolved and how the show is really becoming the, the center of the digital and the convergence. Let me start. We are all in the middle, middle of a tornado. And before we start talking about the tornado, let's start looking at the, the, what happened in the last 100 years. And I think in the last 100 years, there were five main revolutions. Not, I'm not talking the political ones, I'm talking technological ones. First one, the horse became a car. We, we don't r ride horses anymore to transportation, we drive cars. That took roughly 30 to 50 years for the car to be really at mass scale, and between, between the beginning of the century and the 50s. Then the second one was when um, the video killed the radio star which is the arrival of TV, and we only saw that took from the early to, uh, 30s to the 50s to the TV sets and the TV distribution get really at scale and become the largest media um, available in, on Earth. The third one was when the typewriter and the calculator became a computer. That was early 60s and was when a lot of productivity went up and didn't ta take until the 80s for the PC to be really, really democratized everywhere. And the, f the last one is the mobile. mobile uh, the phone became mobile and took between the 80s and the 2000s to this become really a mass. So every of these revolutions are bigger and bigger and they are getting shorter in time. I was here two years ago and at the time we shared with you about video and mobile and we had very aggressive pr uh, predictions about what that would become. Well, I have to tell you that video and mobile uh, outgrew our predictions by a factor of 10. It's amazing what's going on with the smartphones and it's amazing what's going on with video. So what I want to do now is, what is digital? Because there's a lot of uh, interpretations about what digital. Is digital about PCs? Is digital about mobiles? What is really digital? And um, I want to share the first thing on digital is, if I can make this work, the digital revolution is going to be mostly about, and I'm going to step, the digital revolution started when people start connecting to the internet. And that was you, the first ad on the top right, on the top left from, for you, is the first internet ad ever. Remember when you had to log in and you would hear, beep, 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 that was your dial-in. Would take 10 minutes to download, you could take a shower and come back. A long journey after that happened. And what we see is that the technology is the driver of that we see more and more content coming. So you see two types, the pure players, Yahoo's, Google, uh, YouTube, all those coming and building their own internet properties. And we start seeing a lot of the more traditional players start putting their content because the audience is there. And that started a very important cycle, which is the cycle of audience generation Audience tr attracts content, content attracts audience, and that starts attracting the ad dollars. So what we have here is the beginning of a new revolution, which is the advertising space of the revolution. And what happens here? Happens, uh, uh, the first part of this, di what digital means, digital means the ability to separate the ad from the content. Historically, because of the linearity, you would have content, you have ad, you have content, we have ad. So if you had a break of a football match and you would have a content after that, uh, ad after that content, all the ad would be the same for every single TV set. So if I was uh, watching the same football uh, match as my wife, we would have the same ad. She was not very interested on uh, Gillette razors for men. So, was a which you a wastage of dollars. The famous sentence, 50% of your ad dollars are wasted, but I don't know which 50% are those. This is very important for the digitalization, which is now, at the same break, 
I can deliver different ads for each set. So that's what happened on the internet. The same people, if we all go on the same website now all together in different computers, we're going to have different ads. So th this is important because this is what unbundling the ad from the content enable the targeting. That's the first revolution which creates a lot of complexity because you're going to start managing all these uh, millions of ads instead of just one ad. The second one is that because of this huge creation of new content distribution, the audience gets highly fragmented. So I guess start going to a lot of different sites. Well, as I start going to all of the sites, the benefit of targeting gets, gets diluted by the cost of to manage all that complexity. So we all know that mass targeting is good, but there's a lot of wastage. Targeting is very good, but it's very expensive. And what we start seeing is a technology that enables for the first time the mass targeting. So I can do mass communication very targeted at scale. That was not possible before. So I can reduce the wastage from the digital, but still have the efficiency of the TV. And that is going to have the most important thing we're going to see in the next phase. And once you do that, so I eliminate the wastage, but I, cannot, I target more than one people, I continue to target large audiences on an effective way. Now, what I need is creatives that have more impact because I already identified the person, so I need to deliver more impact. And we know that the better creatives deliver better impact. So we see, usually on a rich media ad, we can have 65% more impact on the same ad. So that's good. So creativity is not that. This is not about technology. Digitalization enabled the, the fragmentation of the ads, the, the audience, and the targeting. But now we need to continue to be creative. And two things, one is the ads are going to be much richer and much more creative, but one thing you're going to see is the ad is going to be much more dynamic. I.e., we go back to our football match that we were watching a while ago, I hope you still remember the score, and when you go there, is the, the ad that I would have at the break, if my team is winning, is probably should be different than the ad that I'm going to have if my team is losing. I would not be very happy if Coke would send the ad saying, congratulations, and I'm losing to zero. So the reality is that we're going to be able to adapt the ad based on the, a lot of different signals. The signals can be weather, can be what signals that influence your life, and those signals are relevant for the way the brand is going to communicate with me. So this technology, Dynamic Ads, is going to enable all that. And this is a computer problem again, because I need to, at the same time, uh, get the same creative and adjust key parts of the creative based on a lot of different factors. I'm not going to bother you with the different things, but this is an ad for a retailer that changed the promotion based on the weather. So if the, it's raining, I, I, I put an ad on a, related to a rain product. If it's sun shining, I put a different ad. And that's a thing that we've not been able to do historically, because we could not control the weather yet. Uh, the next thing is social. There's a huge thing about what is social. We have a huge concept of what digital was, PC and Internet. Digital is this ability to disaggregate. Social is not a container where all social interactions are. The social interactions, the social signals can be not put only on a container, but can be put across the web. The same way that your contacts and your interactions with people are not only on your contact book. So what you could imagine that all social signals can be distributed across the web, and if I go to a single site, I have all the, my, what my friends and what people say about that site that are relevant to me. So instead of being all to, uh, put on a container, they can be distributed across the web. So all web is going to be digital, and that's, uh, I'm sorry, all the web is going to be social, and that's going to be better for the way we target, because we're going to get targeting based on who you are, based on what you look for, based on where you are in the, term, in the, the content type, and based on social signals. So the more signals we have, the better the ad is targeted at you, and the better is the experience for you. Because again, my wife is not going to have the Gillette ad 
for razors for men, although she buys those for me. Um, and it's going to be global. My father was tracked down using his Nokia phone, and then he was beaten. There are over 60 journalists that were jailed. My father taught me, show what is happening not saying what is right or what is wrong. The blocking of SMS messages, the closing down of television stations. Sunday's protest captured on amateur videos. A few people started sending out videos, and the next day the video would be gone. So we tried to get these videos and put it in a safe place. And all I had was a YouTube account. Some create designs, some upload videos, some take videos. And everyone tries to help in every way possible. We're able to identify a police car, run over a protester, and have proof of this. Not from one angle, not from two angles, but three different angles. That makes even governments change the way they behave because there is proof of every wrong move. We're going towards a, a new kind of a democracy. It's not 100,000, 2 million people watching. It's 6 billion people watching. So what we saw is where we are today is disaggregation of content from the ad, which enabled targeting, ability to aggregate targeting at scale, ability to make much better ads because the creativity and the dynamic of the ad is going to be better, more impactful, getting the social signals together with intent, context, and uh, profile, and this at a global scale. So this is, going, is a big, big revolution. And when you put this together, you see that your media plan or the advertiser's media plan is going to change. Why? Because this is not going to be any more uh, offline budget and digital budget, because that's not the way the consumer uses. You want to target the consumer, so you're going to start having a much more media mix integration than you ever had in the past. And one of the examples is that when you add YouTube, and you, you, I'm using YouTube, but I could use digital generally or any other uh, site, depending on how it works, you have extended reach, which is important because the audience is moving and you want to reach more and more people of your target. You have a much higher recall because the, the things we said, the ad is more relevant for you, is more dynamic, so when I see the ad, I'm going to have higher recall. And if I have extended reach, and higher recall, I actually have a, high, a higher ROI. So what we're seeing here is digital is changing the face. We're going to do uh, advertising going forward. And it's not going to be only on PC. There's more Android babies than human babies. And per day, and this is going to change a lot for two reasons. One is the mobile is the first media that follows you everywhere you go. And that's going to transform the way marketers are going to talk to you from your living room to your point of sale. And that's very important on the developed world where retail and the distribution is a very big part of the market mix. And if you think about that, is going to be uh, the ability to liaise in, uh, product exposure and information. And if you go to the next area of growth globally, which is Africa, some parts of Asia, and some parts of Latin America, actually, the mobile is not going to be another media. It's going to be the most important media. Mobile is going to be most important, more important than TV because those areas, there's not a TV set per person, but there's going to be a mobile per person or a much higher penetration of mobile versus TV. So a lot of the big package, pack, uh, consumer goods people are start thinking about mobile is going to be my main media in a lot of ways. The way I get up to the retail and the distribution point and the way I'm going to get massive communication at uh, areas where uh, TV penetration is low. But the beauty of this is actually is not about PC and mobile. 
TV is going to go through a, a, a massive transformation. Why? Because first, TV is going to be over IP. Secondly, the setup boxes or the TV sets are going to have the capability to uh, unbundle the content from the ad. So we, everything we said about the PC is going to be uh, valid for TV. How long is it going to take? Remember what we said about the car and the mobile? It's going to take m much more uh, faster than we've ever thought. So this is what we're going to see on the advertising side. A much more impact for the dollars you spend, which, if you put it all together, makes that advertisers going to have much more results with the same ad budgets. And everybody, everything is, uh, is going to be digital across screens. And this is a good illustration that I can start seeing uh, in the TV, I can move from my, my pad, and then I can go with my, mo my mobile. And all of this is going to be targeted at scale, is going to be dynamic ads and very impactful ads, and it's going to be social and global. So this is a, a huge change from where we were before. This is just the beginning, because we have another part of the, the, the digitalization, which is the content digitalization. So this is what's just about the advertising part, but if you think about the content digitalization, what you have is between the 50s and the 80s, I have TV was only broadcasting. So what we had is limited programming, mass, mass appeal, not very targeted, and average. Between the 80s and 2002, we, we got the channels. And what we saw is a, the arrival of cable. When cable arrived, we got to start having uh, 500 channels. So if in the, until the 80s, if I want to be, uh, watch sports, I would have to wait for Pros Even 1 to give me sports. If Pros Even 1 wouldn't give me sports, I could not have it. We get to the 80s, and we start having channels giving sports 24, uh, 24 hours a day. So what we start here, is the, the, the day of the epiphany when we have the premiere of American Idol. And why is it relevant, American Idol? Because it's the first time that uh, millions of Americans express to the media through text messaging. So this is the first time that can be bi-directional. And what happens there is that when you have sight, sound and motion and social, social interaction, you actually have a motivating force, because now I'm engaged. So what we get now is that we are in this next phase of the digitalization, which is the cable, which I'm going to start having illimited channels, unlimited and niche content, passionate audiences, and we're going to move from a broadcasting to a microcasting. And what does that mean? That I'm going to start having much more channels dedicated to me. But the problem is that I have to browse across so much of the content. So what you're going to see next is that digitalization is going to enable to create not ProSiban 1, not RTL 1, not, cable, not ASPN 1, is going to create my own channel. Why? Because when I go on TV or on PC, the, I have enough signals that the, 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 I can be aggregated the content I want. So, instead of having the TV guide, and you have to go through the TV guide and say, I want to be on channel 1 at 8 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock I want to be on RTL 2, and, it, and so on and so forth, this actually is very prehistoric. Because digitalization can do that all for us. They even know what I, what I wanted to do, they know what my profile was, they know what I searched for, and therefore they can predict what I would like to see and create my own channel. So there's not only a much more quantity of content available out there, there's also that that content can be aggregated de depending on the person. As we saw, search results used to be standard, now search results are much more tailored, advertising is much more tailored, the content is going to be much more tailored. And what does that mean? That means that I'm going to be much, much more involved with the, the audience, the content, and with the ads relevant to that content. So, when I aggregate, and this is going to be from premium content 
to made for web content to UGC content, this is going to be all aggregated because I want to be, see my watch, my premium series, but I also want to made for web and I may want to see the cat on the skateboard or the dog. Okay, so all this is going to require a lot of consultancy to make this all happen. But as we predicted two years ago that mobile and video would be big, I think we are no one is around this uh, room has any doubt that uh, mobile is going to be big, is already big, video is going to be big, is already big. The reality is every part of this digitalization is going to be an immense transformation. So, the horse is dead. And now it's going to be a new car. Thank you.